Every year, one or two games come around that really get all of my hype juices flowing. Games that I've been looking forward to for years, or just games that looked absolutely phenomenal from the first time I laid eyes on them. 18 months ago, it was Final Fantasy XV. Last year, it was Nier Automata, and this year, one of those games was Monster Hunter World. What do all of those games have in common? They were all initially released on consoles with a future release date onto the almighty PC. I own every single one of those games for my PS4 Pro because otherwise, I'd have to cure my insatiable desire for instant gratification in order to play some truly great games. And while I'm very much with everyone that the best gaming experiences can be on PC, waiting nearly two years to play the latest installment in one of my favorite franchises of all time after it's already been delayed by an entire decade isn't a better gaming experience to me. I don't care how great the graphics are, if I can't play the game at the same time as everybody else, it's a worst experience. That being said, I'm also the guy who will be definitely rocking a Gordon Freeman Noctis Roman around the Lucian Kingdom, regardless of the fact that I already got a platinum trophy for the dang game on my PlayStation. So sure, Nier only took a couple of weeks to hit Steam, and a lot of games do simultaneous releases, but Final Fantasy XV has been out for nearly forever in gaming terms on console, and why the crap isn't launching on PC today? And while Monster Hunter World has been out on console for the last 39 days, 14 hours, and 6 minutes, it'll only stomp onto PC at a a later date. This fact annoyed me so much that it got me thinking about just why certain games often take so much extra time to finally land on PC, so that's what this video is all about. And yes, for those of you who are wondering, I am filming in a glorious closet. I am on the road traveling throughout the United States with my family, and we are standing, staying at random places, and filming locations, as you could imagine, from staying at different places all the time, Airbnbs and such, uh, ends in some not not so desirable uh, location suiting. So this is where the next few videos are going to be shot. This is what we'll have to deal with. Thank you guys so much for understanding. I really appreciate that. If you don't care about this at all and you just want to know the information about the video, let's get to that. But thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sticking with me with, in these adverse conditions. Final Fantasy 15 is only the most recent example of a game that makes many PC players feel at least a little snubbed. Other big offenders include the likes of GTA 5, Batman Arkham Asylum, Destiny 2, and a majority of major entries in the Assassin's Creed series. In those cases, the time delay between console and PC releases ranges from a few days to many months, and it really sucks. I mean, clearly, we should be grateful that we get a PC version at all for many of these games, when many of the best games that came out last year, like Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn, will never see their ultimate form on the best hardware imaginable, so I don't like being grateful at least we can count our blessings here you know obviously the biggest issue with these delays is that we pc players need to wait longer to finally play the games that we've been so excited for for so long but it's not the only issue many of us have friends who prefer console over pcs i know i know we all have them and who like to get into games on day one most of us even follow people like that on social media or watch them on youtube in both of those cases spoilers can be a major issue even if you're extremely diligent in avoiding any and all aforementioned spoilers spoilers, they're almost impossible to avoid completely without disappearing into the abyss only to re-emerge when you finally get your hands on the dang game. Been 18 months since Final Fantasy 15, how can you avoid the spoilers of chapter 13 being so terrible? You just can't. Beyond having key plot details, gameplay mechanics, or other important elements of a game being spoiled for you, PC release delays also mean you're excluded even more than usual from many conversations with your console gaming peers because you haven't yet experienced what they have. In the same vein, by the time the game in question does finally launch on PC, most people who have played it on console are already kind of over it. It's a sad reality that we just sort of have to deal with more often than we're usually comfortable with. But why is this a thing? Why do we, as PC gamers, often get the short end of the stick when it comes to release dates? I mean, we're the ones who are spending real money on the hardware. We're the ones who have the best version of the game, so why aren't we getting it first? Well, there are actually a few reasons for this. Filthy consoles are where the money is at. For a long time, PC was the king of game sales, primarily because it didn't really face all that much competition. But many years down the road, we've seen the meteoric rise of consoles sort of leave the PC market in the dust. In the last decade or longer, console gaming became far more popular than PC because it was the easier and often cheaper 
cheaper option. As more and more people flock to these purpose-built gaming machines, developers and publishers focus more and more on getting games out for them. Fast forward a few years and we have many developers creating games primarily with consoles in mind and the PC is just an afterthought. Even with PC gaming being more popular now than ever before, consoles still represent the majority of the gaming market that eats new releases up like I do sweets, which is to say quite a lot and quickly because holy crap on this trip it to America, I cannot tell you how many sweets I've had that I've missed. So uh, like I have to regale. Okay, so I've missed Mike and Ike's. I've missed Three Musketeers. I've missed Twizzlers. I have missed Dots. I've missed Jujubees. I've missed Juji Fruit. Uh, what else? What else? I've missed Swedish Fish. I've missed Cheap Candy. The candy that I can buy for a dollar at Walmart in the theater boxes. I the, the, or even the giant bags, like the giant bulk size bags of M&Ms that you can get for $10. Just, just, we just don't have that in South Africa. I can't believe how many sweets I've eaten since on this trip. Anyways, moving on, I, I eat sweets a lot. That's the whole point, it was a joke. Anyways, with the console market actually being the where the primary gamers are at, it makes sense from a business perspective as to why publishers would see the value in aiming their releases at console gamers first. Even if that wasn't the case, there's still a little something called exclusivity deals. We all know that certain games are exclusive to certain consoles. Xbox has Halo, Nintendo has Mario, and Sony has everything. No, seriously, the sheer amount of spectacular PlayStation exclusive titles is the main reason I actually went out and bought one. Companies like Sony are willing to pay a pretty hefty premium for the opportunity to be the only gaming platform where you can play certain games, and judging by my willingness to adopt their hardware because of it, it's an extremely effective tactic. But these exclusives were never really meant to hit PC, so it's not as disappointing that PC gamers can't get their hands on them. What is disappointing, however, is timed exclusivity. When companies like Sony partner up with publishers to delay the release of specific games and DLC onto competing consoles or PC, even if said games and DLC are totally ready to go. It's a bit of a crappy move for the consumers at least. It's such an obvious money grab that severely divides large portions of the gaming community and it just generally leaves gamers with a bad taste in their mouths unless they happen to have the consoles which the game comes out on in which case you don't care and if you own all the consoles then you just you have a lot of money. Anyways moving on next one pirates. Why developers and publishers might feel the need to delay a hotly anticipated game's PC release is the one that pops up the most. It's because of all that piracy matey. Like it or not game piracy is more prevalent on PC than all of the consoles combined, and it's largely because it's ridiculously easy to do so on PC. Contrary to the olden days when you needed slightly above average experience with computers, pirating a game on PC is now no harder than clicking download and as soon as hackers crack its security measures. Console games, on the other hand, are far more difficult and or expensive to crack. That's because that you have to crack not only the game, but then you also have to keep the console from recognizing that it's a cracked game, whereas on PC there's ways around that that's more easy and it's not as locked down playstation xbox those like it's just the security measures are baked into the hardware not just the software publishers know this and they also know that many people game on both console and pc they also know that if people are given the choice to pay for something or get it for free a large portion of those people would opt for the latter by releasing on console first and much later for PC, publishers essentially ensure that for the duration of that time period, people who really want to play the game as soon as possible will have no other choice but to buy it on the console, which is the way things should work anyways. Video games and most other forms of media take a ton of time and effort to create, and creators should absolutely be paid for their work. I just wish they wouldn't delay the release because that we won't pay them as PC gamers, which is just absolute rubbish. I hate that we're known for that. But here's the thing. Online piracy isn't going anywhere. These will, for the foreseeable future anyway, always be people who choose to go that route for whatever reason. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to point fingers. I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to sit here on a moral high horse anyways. But as anyone who's really into PC gaming will tell you, there's an overwhelming amount of people who wouldn't pirate and they're the ones on the receiving end when publishers decide to delay their PC releases. And pirates, in my experience, don't seem to care all that much about only being able to grab that new game weeks or months after release. They don't care mostly because they're not paying for it anyways. The ones who do care are the gamers who fully intend to pay for their games and they're the ones most adversely being affected by this whole operation. Next, spit and polish. The third reason certain gamers might take a little longer to drop on PC is the least nefarious and legitimately understandable one. They're just not ready yet. Developing a game for one or more consoles is far easier than developing for PC. With console hardware, developers know exactly what they're getting. They know what the hardware is capable of, and they also know what it's 
not capable of. They know how to best utilize whatever power the consoles are able to push out and can develop accordingly with knowing that it's not going to change before they actually release the game. This isn't the case when developing games for PC. There are almost unlimited possible hardware configurations in any PC gamers rig at any given time with new products being launched all the time and making sure that a game runs at least on the very vast majority of those systems can be a major time sink for developers. Even if they decide to outsource this to some degree with beta testing, they still have to go in and fix the bugs players find before they can commit to a full release. Far too many PC ports have been utter and complete trash upon initial release and those games have usually been heavily lambasted for this. So ensuring that their game is actually ready to run on PC and run well is something we should be glad some developers are taking very seriously. I'm looking at you, Warner Brothers. Get your crap together. Stop releasing Batman games before they're ready. Monster Hunter World seems to be a prime example of waiting for the spit and polish, as the game's producer explained. We haven't really put out that much on PC before that's been developed internally, so we're just asking for a little bit more time on the PC version so we can bring you a more optimized fine-tuned version. Other developers have also chosen to push back their game's release to ensure it's up to the standard PC gamers are expecting. In reference to the game's delayed PC release, Destiny 2's community manager said that they, quote, want to make sure that we're building a product that we feel is worthy of the PC gaming community. We want to make sure that it's a product that we're excited to ship and that they, quote, want to make sure it's the best game that the PC can enjoy. And then for Final Fantasy 15, which is the one that I love so much, in an interview with Rock Paper Shotgun, the technical director and development manager for the latest FF game commented that the delay wasn't that they haven't been working on the game for quite some time. In fact, they said, quote, actually, when we were working on the PC version of the game, we were simultaneously working on the high-end console versions, the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X versions. They were all being developed in parallel. They also expressed that they didn't want to be a basic port, so it needed its own optimizations, tweaks, developments, and setup. Obviously, this gesture is definitely appreciated by myself and many others who have 4K monitors and 1080 TIs, as we'll get to see the dopest hair works insane effects and super high res textures but holy cow if i had a baby back when 15 initially came out they would be able to form rudimentary sentences at this point it could be fully potty trained but i guess the good news is that the child exists at all otherwise we'd have a tween entering into puberty slamming doors all around the house listening to edm trash running an instagram meme page while we wait for the game to come out at all since it was first supposed to be a ps3 spinoff for the 13 series over a decade ago so you know we don't have a 12 year old on our hands we just have you know a, a terrible twos toddlers any parents will get that joke so i guess 4k hdr g-sync it's worth the wait. I think that's the thing though, the biggest difficulty that we all have with PC ports. Either they're half rotisserie pieces of roadkill or they've matured enough to the point that we could have seen a sequel on the console before we even get the initial launch and it seems that there's really no in between there. It's been a difficult thing for me to rectify for my PC master race ways. I want the best of the best, meaning high refresh rate, ultra wide or 4k gaming, but unfortunately, the best games aren't being prioritized for the PC anymore. Instead, we get ports or delays. And I think it's easy for all of us to say that a PC is the best place to play any game. High resolution, best textures, fastest frame rate. But it's getting harder and harder to advocate it as the best gaming experience. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that can wait a month or dozens for your hotly anticipated games to come out on Steam. But I'm pretty sure most of us can't which is why games are developed for consoles anyways. More users flocking to a lockdown ecosystem, creating higher demand for the quickest releases. But what do you all think? Are you one of the select group of people that waits for PC only? If you have both a console and a PC, which ones do you buy the most games for? If the PC port is delayed a week or so, will that affect your purchasing decision? Will you wait for the PC if it's only a week? I want to have those conversations with you either down in the comments or over on Twitter. I'm at UF Disciple. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this dive into delayed PC ports and get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers.